Hello, everyone. So you've heard from Susie and Sam about how we're seeing improved raw read accuracy uh, coming from these new V5 soup transformer models. Uh, you also heard a little bit from Susie about the implementation of the hero algorithm within Dorado as Dorado Correct. Well, now I get to come up and talk about how these two advancements are leading to improved performance in de novo assembly using Oxford Nanopore long reads. So just to quickly bring us all to the same page, de novo assembly is the process of reconstructing an organism's genome sequence using just a set of sequencing reads, each of which contains only a small portion of that sequence. And we do this in order to gain an unbiased uh, look at the complete range of genomic sequence variation in an organism uh, without problems caused by reference divergence or reference errors. Now, there are many different uh, pipelines and uh, softwares to do de novo assembly, each of which uh, requires different input data and different computational resources uh, and uses different algorithms, as well as outputting slightly different flavors of de novo assemblies. But today I'll be talking about the most exciting frontiers in the de novo assembly world, uh, that is diploid telomere to telomere genome assembly, especially human T to T, uh, as well as the assembly of some more challenging plant and animal samples. So starting with human T2T and introducing the, the state of the art. So about six months ago, I gave a talk at Nanopore Community Meeting in Houston, where I introduced the, the very first telomere to telomere assembly to use just Nanopore simplex reads to construct the assembly backbone. So. Uh, pri uh, prior to this, it was necessary to use both highly accurate reads, like nanopore duplex reads, as well as ultra-long reads to build the assembly backbone. Uh, however, thanks to some uh, special experimental high-accuracy run conditions, we were able to generate ultra-long sequencing data of sufficient accuracy that we could use it without any higher accuracy data. And we were able to use this to generate nine telomere to telomere contigs, that is, gapless sequence stretching from one telomere to the other, uh, as well as 10 additional T to T scaffolds. Now, uh, this is really great, but it, it does come with two caveats. One, these higher accuracy run conditions did have some trade offs in other applications, so they weren't necessarily suitable for everything. Uh, two, uh, this was still slightly short of the mark for what was at the time the best assembly yet released. And that is the Telomere to Telomere Consortium's uh, ultra high depth multi technology uh, assembly, where they used hundreds of X coverage of several different sequencing technologies uh, in order to construct an assembly that uh, had 23 telomere to telomere contigs and three telomere to telomere scaffolds uh, as the automated output of the assembly software. Now, many of you will probably know that they then went and manually uh, curated this and tweaked a few things and got all 46 chromosomes telomere to telomere. Uh, so that's the, the new Q100 uh, assembly from the telomere to telomere consortium. But the automated outputs of their pipeline included 23 D to D contigs and three T to T scaffolds. So do these new advancements help us close this gap uh, and allow us to, to build a T to T assembly using normal run conditions? So to test this, we generated a new data set with 45X ultra long data with an N50 of 100 kbp coming from just two flow cells of Promethion data. And importantly, this data was with normal run conditions this is data any of you can be generating in your labs right now. We base called this with the new V5 soup models uh, before running the Dorado correct algorithm and assembling with the Verco pipeline, uh, along with 35x, uh, for, so the outputs of one flow cell of poor C data, uh, which was used for graph phasing. Now, what do we get for all of this? We get the best automated human assembly ever, as far as we're aware. So we got 30 telomere to telomere contigs, as well as five telomere to telomere scaffolds as the automated outputs of just running the software without any manual intervention. The assembly sizes are consistent with what we expect, uh, and the N50s are consistent with whole human chromosomes. So again, as far as we know, this is the most contiguous and structurally accurate assembly produced in an automated fashion yet. 
Now, what about uh, consensus accuracy or, or base level sequence accuracy? So we do know that normal nanopore sequencing data uh, has trouble reconstructing the sequence of long homopolymers. And this is because as the same base goes through the pore many, many times, uh, the signal, the electrical signal goes flat. So we've taken this assembly and we've polished it with our soon to be released assembly polishing kit using the 6B4 technology. So 6B4 is a variant on the 5B4 technology we've talked about in the past. Uh, both of them work in the same principle. You do PCR on your sample with a mix of canonical and modified bases. For 6B4, uh, canonical and modified A's and T's. Uh, these get uh, mixed in the homopolymers, leading to signal variation, which allows us to accurately uh, detail the length even of very long homopolymers. And so we polished uh, that previous assembly I showed with this one flow cell of APK data, uh, and we go from an unpolished Q accuracy of Q41 uh, to Q51, so uh, an extraordinarily improvement in consensus accuracy as well as the most uh, complete and contiguous genome at a large scale. Now this is spectacular if you can get ultra-long and poor C data. Uh, however, we are aware that it's not feasible for every single sample. Uh, sometimes you don't have enough sample. Sometimes uh, you may have a small genome, which uh, doesn't work well with ULK extractions. Uh, and sometimes you just have tissues that are really challenging to extract from, like biobank tissues. Uh, you also may have a sample with a more complex gen genome architecture. So right now, Verco only supports haploid and diploid assemblies. So we've uh, been working to validate an uh, orthogonal pipeline that uses just our standard LSK data uh, and then uses this Dorado Correct program as well as the HiFi ASM assembler, which is robust even if you don't have long-range phasing information. It can output what's called a dual assembly, uh, and it also is robust in lacking ultra-long data, uh, and it has preliminary support for higher levels of ploides. So we started evaluating this pipeline in easy mode with a haploid male honeybee. This is a 240 megabase roughly genome, uh, and it's, as I said, haploid. So we sequenced 20 gigabases, or roughly the output of a minion flow cell, and reconstructed almost every single chromosome almost entirely. But of course, this is easy mode. So for the, the next thing, we wanted to look at a more challenging sample. Uh, and it is one of my favorite organisms, and definitely the only reason I am currently talking nearly coherently <laughs> after taking a red eye from the West Coast just uh, landing this morning. Coffee, specifically Caffea arabica. <laughs> so this is a tetraploid, and uh, we assembled it with one promethion flow cell and got all four haplotypes. Uh, so it's a 2.4 gigabase tetraploid genome, or 600 megabases per subgenome haplotype, uh, anyway, very, very complete. Two chromosomes we assembled entirely, most of the rest of the chromosomes in three to four contigs. So to briefly summarize, oh, uh, sorry, also if you're interested in the sequencing of interesting organisms, we'll be uh, doing more of them in the live lounge with Org1. So to briefly summarize, uh, improved base color accuracy and the Dorado Correct algorithm allow for the most uh, complete and contiguous genomes ever, uh, using just two flow cells of ULK, one of PORC, and one of APK. Uh, but if you can't get all of that data or you're working with even more complex genome architecture, we also have a pathway uh, to do good assemblies with just LSK data. All right. Thank you so much.